So for those of you who are just joining us again, welcome. Please put into the chat where you're tuning in from. This is an international audience. I know that there are folks coming in from GBHDT. We have some folks who are right in our backyard in Brooklyn. I saw you, Ed. Ed is representing the Bronx, one of our community partners. I see our TAs here. I see all of you here ready to uplift and really celebrate the voices of the participants that are going to be featured today. So thank you all for coming. There are some um, ex especially important people that we wanted to acknowledge and um, shortly after Amalia and I exit stage left, we're going to be inviting Julia Rogers to share a few words to you all. She is um, the Assistant Public Affairs Officer from U.S. Embassy, Embassy Port of Spain and certainly without their support, the work of GBHTT wouldn't be possible. So um, at this juncture, I would like to pass the mic over to our colleagues over at U.S. Embassy Port of Spain. Thank you. Hello, thank you for that very warm welcome. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Girl Be Heard TT Unplugged. There's so much positive energy here and I love it. Like this is exactly what we need in these really kind of troublesome times that's moving through the past two years of a COVID-19 pandemic. We need joy. We need loud voices to shine through. So I am Rose Rogers, the Assistant Public Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy here in Port of Spain, and I want to thank each and every one of you who has been part of helping make tonight happen. I want to thank Akai Webster. I want to thank Girl Be Heard, all of the board of directors, Girl Be Heard in TT in Brooklyn. Without everybody's hard work on this, we wouldn't be here tonight. And the U.S. Embassy is proud to support this mission. This is a a mission that aligns directly with our own. Girl Be Heard promotes cultural and educational exchanges. It builds leadership skills, creates safe community spaces. All of these are wonderful ideals that align exactly with what we want to see in the future. Now, I also wanna say congratulations to each of the girls out here. I personally know, and now this is a, a little bit of a personal story that not even most of my coworkers know, I've never been one who is very comfortable with public speaking. Funny thing, now I'm a public affairs officer for a U.S. Embassy. I didn't have a lot of opportunity growing up to speak in front of large crowds. However, it was actually through spoken word poetry that I started getting more confident in speaking in public. I became really fond of the spoken word poet Sarah Kay. And I decided one day after listening to her on, I was on YouTube listening to her that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go down to a local coffee shop and sign up for their next open mic night when they were doing slam poetry. And that really shifted my, it made me a little less, marginally less terrified of public speaking. I still kind of get, you know, really nervous right before going on, but I, I have to say each and every time I could go out and speak and say things in public and do things in public perform for an audience, it, it is shifting something inside of me. And I know we've all heard the Sage Council that our words are powerful, that they have meaning, that we can use our words to change the world. And I, I truly, in my heart, believe that. When we use our voices, we can make real change. Malala Yousafzai said, you know, we realize the importance of our voices only when we are silent. And so I think it's really important to have organizations like Girl Be Heard, TT and Girl Be Heard. So I look forward tonight to hearing each and every one of your voices roar. Thank you all. Buenos noches a todos. Y bienvenidos al show Disconectado GBHTT Esperanza Radical. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to GBHTT's Unplugged Show, Radical Hope. Radical Hope, a vision of new possibilities. The possibilities of change in our minds, change in our actions, and change in the values of, in our values of how we view differences. This cohort was a glance of how GBHTT can make a difference in the lives of our participants. The ones who are too shy to speak out, those who are too few to be heard, the ones who are afraid of being accepted. We have given them a safe space and the opportunity to believe that their voices matter and they too deserve to be heard. 
This cohort has taken us around the globe, from Pakistan to Syria, Venezuela to Jamaica, and right back to Trinidad and Tobago. And what a ride it has been. A short ride, but a very significant one. The mix of cultures and individualities was a learning curve for us all. One that we'll forever treasure. This evening, you will hear the voices of these talented young ladies from across the world who came together in a virtual space to tell their stories. But before we turn our attention to these remarkable young ladies, I must thank the ones who have made this program possible. Girl Be Heard New York for their unwavering commitment and support. The U.S. Embassy here in Port of Spain, who have been our partners since the inception of this program. The Oak Foundation, whose support and funding helps to ensure this program's continuity. B Entertainment, the parent company of Girl Be Heard and Tobago here in Trinidad and Tobago. The Living Waters Community, La Casita, cultural heritage who made it possible for us to connect with not only the participants but the families who allowed us into their lives and into their homes. We must also thank Hopeful Handbags Charity Trinidad and Tobago who was kind enough to provide personal care packages for our participants. And last but not least, special thanks to our passionate committed teaching artist Veronique and Aria. It goes without saying that we are stronger together. Let's all continue to give radical hope by helping to develop, amplify, and celebrate the voices of our talented young women. Thank you and enjoy the show. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Akai, for your beautiful, beautiful words hi, this hi. evening. Hello, hello. <laughs> awesome. We're just going to introduce that's, ourselves. That's you just saw a beautiful, wonderful hi, girl photograph, but um, here we are in the flesh virtually. <laughs> my, name, <laughs> my name is Ariel John, and this is my co host. Veronique Francois, and we are the teaching artists of Gilbyhood Trinidad and Tobago, and we are so happy right. to have you all here with us this evening for Radical Hope, Unplugged Radical yeah. Hope. That's right, that's right. And so in this team space, we know. Go ahead. Anything is possible, and including that. No, I, I, I was just, I was just about to say the same thing that you were going to say, Ariel. I'm sure about this. So go right ahead. <laughs> All right. So as we're operating in this virtual space of Zoom, and as we're um here, you know, the the bits of it that are pre-recorded and some of it is actually live. Um, just allow for anything to happen if somebody's pet might run into this space, or if you know there might be some technical glitches. Um, you know. Just give us the, a little bit of your grace. Give us, continue to give us a little bit of your love. Um, show up in the chat section. We're going to hear from our girls this evening who are incredibly talented, super powerful, and they have created these pieces to share with you all today. So your section as the audience is the chat section. All your, all your positive feedback, all your love, everything, all your affirmation everything that you have to say to them, throw it inside the chat. <laughs> Oli, let me see all your favorite emojis here to show some love to Gilby, her child, to be go here this evening. Show all your emojis here, favorite yeah. emoji. Let's light up the child, let me keep it like I see this song. So, smiley face with hearts and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, light up the chat because we all see how oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> yes, it will be fire. <laughs> It will be people dancing. Yeah, so we hear about love, we hear about positive. We definitely hear about radical hope, which is the theme yeah. of our show here this evening. Now, let's tell you a little bit about what Girl Be Heard is about. Um, specifically, Girl Be Heard in Trinidad and Tobago. We started in 20, what was 16? Of mm -hmm. course, it was 2017. So we've been here for a little while. And this is, Ariel, I was thinking about, this is, I think, our fourth virtual show. 
right? That's right. That just... and, and come then. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you will be back on a stage very, very soon. But, you yeah. know, we are so grateful and thankful that we continue. We're given the opportunity to continue show showcases these wonderful young women with their talents, with their abilities to you beautiful people here this evening. Yeah. And something I really appreciate about the program is that it continues to evolve. And so right. this particular cohort that you're about to witness this evening is it fresh, it different. Um, in this group, we have young people from all different parts of the world who all call Trinidad and Tobago their home right now, right? Yeah. And so these stories are, you know, while, while they kind of fall into these sim like similar themes of girl empowerment, which is what Girl Behood is about, um, there's so many like extra and, and, and varying um, perspectives that have entered into our classroom space right that is really exciting to me um different like different pathways of imagination and, and seeing the world in a different way so you know um the, all the way down to language mm -hmm. veronique so uh, yeah. i am really excited for for our audience today yeah yeah, yeah. building on the, the theme i mean you talked about you know um these these participants coming from the front Part of the world, it's such a diverse group, not only because of that, but because they are such a big mix of different types of art, you know, they're talented yeah. in so many different mm. ways. And traditionally, we know that that Girl Be Heard and Girl Be Heard TT by extension has focused for a long time on spoken word poetry, but now we have branched off. We're doing all kinds of things here, and I love it, I love it, I love it, and y'all will see, and y'all are going to be amazed and blessed by everything that happens here this evening. That's right. I think that we should jump right in. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Ariel? We should jump right in? It's about <laughs> that time. It's about yeah, yeah, yeah. that time. I was thinking, yeah, yeah. too, mm -hmm. um, just one thing. The emoji, as as far as the emojis go, and the you know the expressing yourself in the chat section, all the New York people, you could throw a little snowflake inside of there too, right? Like that's all the snowstorm. You just throw a snowflake inside the comments, so we we know where they're coming from. But yeah, ready to jump into the show. Um, very much. <laughs> we go right here. Um, heat because it was real hot. But I get to know for topic. <laughs> Let's jump right into the show. Um, right. right, so our first contestant, her name is Corey, and we spoke a little bit about, you know, um, we'll be here traditionally, um, we lean more towards spoken word, but this this particular participant, she's a very, very strong poet, a very, very strong writer, and she's going to share mm -hmm. one of her poems with us. Hey guys, I'm Corey, and if you're watching this, I want to wish you a happy, happy new year. 2022 hope you guys had an awesome christmas and now let's get into it so today i would like to share a poem that i made it's about how the world doesn't get to tell anyone who they are so i named it every person's freedom everyone should love being called pretty pretty at heart not by face we shouldn't spend our life on trying to get high because with the world we live in now, it's either do or die. We can't spend our time keeping our popularity above. In the world we live in now, all we have is love. We dress in costumes that describe out social rank. In the world we live in now, none of that matters because if I'm being quite frank, we all fill a mold created by society. In the world we live in now, there's not much variety. Some of us are hanging on just by a thread. In the world we live in now, personalities are dead. Some people are fake, others quite real. In the world we live in now, it's love that we feel. I say pride's a virtue. But some say pride's a sin. But in the world we live in now, why is it that pride helps us win? So let's start change today. Because if we don't, our world is not going to last either way. Now, I hope you enjoyed and understood this poem. Because everyone needs to know that they have a role in this life. 
for they are unique like no one else. We might not think that the world needs us, but it does for we are unique like no one has ever been before or will come after. Thank wow. you so much for that, Corey. We really, really, really appreciate that piece. And I know it was one of the things we didn't tell all of yet. Um, Corey actually created the animation for that video. So not, she didn't only just create the, the piece of writing and the speech to go with it um, and do the voice, you heard her, um, but she also created the animation as well. So Veronique, you know what I am actually excited for? What's that, Stama? The next, for the for the um the stage in the revolution, which is our our next showcase coming up in April, I feel like we go in and have a GBHTP hologram. Like <laughs> yes, everybody getting so. a hologram in their house, so like you're getting you're getting the performance in your house. That's correct. That's, the, that's the next level. Uh, uh, girl, we just need the, we just need the fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Idea. We get man. Up and up. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and up. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Well, pick up your whole stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, feature filmmaker. Yes. I'm watching it, Corey. I'm seeing it. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, so yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. We off to a, a, a great start, a strong start. I see the, the chart blowing up. Yeah, yeah. Something that Corey said yes. that stood out to me. She she spoke about, you know, the importance of accepting your uniqueness. Um, at the end there, which which really resonates with me as well. So so yeah, we have we have here yeah, at Gil, we heard one of the, the things I always always appreciate is that we have these young people with such big ideas and big voices, Ariel. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Big ideas and big voices. And I'm really excited to share with you what we have coming up next. As we mentioned before, right. we have a group of participants this year in this cohort with variety of gifts and one of the things mm -hmm. one of one of the the artistic gifts especially in this cohort is the artistic gift of of drawing right or, or painting or visual art so um mm -hmm. while, while it comes up on the screen i'm going to explain two of the pieces that our next participant drew for us and it is it's really really powerful and then I will read her explanation for that piece. All right, so, so I want to draw your attention to this drawing on the screen. I mean, without reading the explanation that Crystal wrote, we can see the powerful imagery already by looking at it. But I'm going to read what she wrote because it's, 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 really, it's really strong. She says, if I had a superpower, I would want the superpower to make anyone happy or to stop hurting because there is so much things to look for in life. And I want them, I don't want them to enjoy it, even though they've been through a lot. I would want them to overcome it and live life to the fullest. So if I had a superpower, I would bring joy to the world. Wow. <laughs> Goosebumps. All right, let's look at her next piece. All right, so for this piece, she says, ever since I was young, I always cared about what people thought of me and always did things to please them instead of myself because I thought that their opinion and outlook of me mattered more than how I felt. But as I grew older, I realized that it's actually the other way around. It doesn't matter what you do or how hard you try to live up to society's standards, people are going to judge you regardless. That's just how the world works. So stop trying so hard to please everyone and just be you. So I drew this little art piece with a woman freeing herself from the weight of the world and with a, with a shirt saying freedom is happiness because that's how I feel and that's my mentality today and forever. Y'all just big up Crystal in the chat, please. Yeah. Big her up. 
Absolutely. you know i you know of course we get to see the artwork before and mm -hmm. i saw these two pieces area without the color without the colors before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i didn't expect it to pop like that especially the first piece that it really reached out to me this one person sharing joy sharing hope sharing happiness to another person right. and then it spreads mm -hmm. you know like a wave yeah so and I you know what, what's something as you were reading there as well, I felt like, um, you know, the, this program is definitely for teenage young people. And I probably got to these discoveries within myself somewhere in my late 20s. Journey. <laughs> the idea that freedom is happiness and how to not be a people pleaser yeah. and to, you know, really release yourself from um, the strongholds of other people and their opinions and how they perceive you. That's some real, you know, that's some real adult type work, you know, um, work on, on, on conditioning and like on learning and um, healing as well for us. So I applaud you. I honor you, Crystal. Thank you for sharing such a, an important and powerful message um, with us. And I'm grateful for the level of self-awareness that you have um, been able to cultivate in yourself and that you bring to the classroom as well. So thank you so much for this. Yeah. Thanks yeah, so when she, when, she grew, when she grew up, when she got older, yeah, you're right. Some of us only realized that later on yeah. in life. <laughs> kind of late. <laughs> so better late than never. That's um, true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, all right. So um, up next in our lineup for this evening, as we already have queued, um, is a an incredible creation. Um, by one of our participants, and her name is Angelina, and she is hailing all the way from Syria, and is perhaps one of our younger participants this year, and um, she has a really beautiful voice that she is about to share with us, and here is Angelina, everybody, enjoy. Ask me instead how I survive, ask me instead how I grew, ask me instead how I Blossomed and rose to be standing here in front of you. You say I'm ugly because of my face spots. That's a pretty ugly thing to say. But I'm becoming a woman and I'm only human. But will you ever outgrow your age? Can you hear all the people in my voice? They are warriors and stars. When I speak my truth, you can hear them too. And that is my superpower. Your insults only help make me stronger. You do not know my full story. When you learn how far I've come, I'm nobody's victim. You think twice before you cross over me. Can you hear all the people in my voice? They are warriors and stars. When I speak my truth, you can hear them too. And that is my superpower. My grandmothers and mothers are strong women. The fruit don't fall far from the tree. I am here on new soil, but I answer that call. I know I was put here to leave. Can you hear all the people in my voice? They are warriors and stars. When I speak my truth, you can hear them too. And that is my superpower. All right, so let, let's let's move right along um, to another another form of art, you know. So we have, we saw some singers, we saw some poets. And within this cohort, we have a novelist, aspiring novelist, aspiring author. And we, we call her Marilyn, and she is going to share with us, she has consented to share with us one of her, you know, one of the pieces that she wrote, a little snippet, a, a, 
a sample, uh, what, what is that? A preview of right. a book that she she's going to write. I'm calling it into existence. That mm -hmm. she is going to she's going to write. So um, before that, before we we jump into that, I just wanted to mention a lot of the a lot of the pieces that you're seeing here tonight. We of course in Gilby here during our sessions we give various prompts that participants have to you know write about. And one of the prompts that really, really resonated with this particular cohort was the idea of having a superpower. You know, the idea of using your talents for good and to bring mm -hmm. hope and joy to the world. So, mm -hmm. yeah, these and these these participants here they are showing their, their superpowers here tonight. So let's 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 listen. First, we're going to listen to Marilyn as she explains, gives us a, a blurb or a summary of her story. And then we're going to listen to the, the beautiful Mercedes as she does the audio book version of Marilyn's story. Beautiful. Hi, everyone. This is Marilyn. And I will be giving a summary of, this, of the story that I wrote. In the Raya Fair dimension is a world where everyone is born with a special ability called mystical. A, a gifted elf with tremendous power named Discord tries to use the planet to conquer Raya Fera. Unsuccessfully, he fails. Having cursed his bloodline, Discord gets swallowed by the planet. Generations later, a teenage girl, Aloe Vera, who has been growing up underground, secretly raised by her cousin. Unable to identify her special gift, finds out that she is related to Discord. After her cousin and his wife have been kidnapped, out, kidnapped, she steps out in the world for the first time. Learning about her past lineage, on this journey, will she be able to save her family? And will she follow in her ancestors' footprints or write her own future? Focus. Feel the energy being built inside of you, instructed Adrian. <sighs> I, 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 I can't. Something is, it, 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 it's, it's blocking the magic, Alavara said. Uh, what's ended here? Sighed Adrian. Hey, where's Narafina? Asked Alavara as they walked out of the training hall. Uh, she went out to get some info, he responded suspiciously. What information? Asked Alvaro. I'll tell you when you're older, said Adrian. You always say that, argued Alvaro. Suddenly, there was a rustle and a bang. Alvaro, save room now, ordered Adrian. But I, I, I can help said Alivara. I said, no, he shouted. Alivara dashed to the safe room, which was right under the training hall. A few hours later, Alivara had come out of the safe room to see what had happened. No, 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 no. Please, don't tell me you're dead. Please don't tell me you're dead. Repeated Alivara in tears. She checked the entire bunker, but did not find anyone there. The next night, she made her way up to the surface, which was a lot harder than expected. As she pulled on the lever in the roof, the bunker opened. She found a ladder and climbed up onto the surface of the world. As moonlight and starlight shone on her, she felt an energy running in her veins, an energy she never had felt before. As she walked on the earth for the first time in forever, she realized that she didn't know where she was going. As she was about to go back into the tunnel to find a map, an arrow shot out of a bush and pierced her in her right upper arm. Alavara shrieked with pain. Then another needle hit her at the nape of her neck, causing her to faint. Moments later, when she opened her eyes, she realized she was tied up by a fire. Alavara monitored the place around her, but her thoughts were quickly interrupted by the sharp pain in her upper right arm. 
The blood was still leaking. Alivara groaned in pain. As she tried to reach for the dog in her right ankle, with her left hand, a voice from behind said, Don't even bother with that. You already took that out. The voice sounded like an older female voice. But as Alivara twisted her neck to turn around and to see who it was, something or someone appeared in front of her. It was a tall female with neck-long black hair and pale purple skin covered in dirt. Don't move or I will not hesitate to shoot, said the purple-skinned woman pointing at pointing a Caltech P-50. Alivara froze in fear. Now, you're going to tell me why you were in my territory, she continued. I, 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 um, I, I, I was, I, I was looking for some, 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 someone, some, someone took them from me. Olivara replied, oh, sad, isn't it? All of us can't have whatever we want, the purple skinned woman said with a bitter expression. How old are you anyway? She asked. And where are you going with, I mean, all that mapping and all the books and that bag of yours? I refuse to tell a stranger who shot me, Alvaro shot back. Huh. Listen, kid. The sun is rising, so either you can tell me where you're going so I can see if it's any be if it's beneficial to me, or I can leave you here in sunlight and I mean, you know, we could see what happens to you. The woman said. What happens at sunrise? Alvar asked. Fine. Don't tell me. I will leave you right here and you can find out for yourself. She replied and started to leave, dragging some of her own luggage. Hey, at least I'm tiny, Alivara said. But the purple-skinned woman was already too far to hear what Alivara had to say. As the sun rose, black dust started rising from the ground. As the dust started rising, Alivara's hair also started glowing as the sun grew higher and higher in the sky. Beasts made from the dust of the ground started constructing. As the first one and the largest beast pounced at Alivara, something shorter than the beast right shot the beast right in his head from behind. Alivara twisted her neck to see the same purple woman shooting the next beast who started pouncing up next. The purple woman ran up to Alivara, and with Hidalgo, she started cutting the ropes one by one while shooting with the other. As soon as Alivara got free, the purple-skinned woman yelled, Run! Run right now! Suddenly, a python appeared with a black gem on top of its head. The gem was glowing radiantly with a magical energy. As the python met eye to eye with Alivara, Alivara's eyes changed the same color as the python. The python kept hissing at her, but soon the black gem on its head started to lose its radiant magic. The magic that seemed to be had seemed to be absorbed by Alivara. The purple woman finally got her attention to the python and to what Alivara was doing. Then, when all the radiant glowing from the python's gem was absorbed, the python fell to the ground lifeless. But the gem appeared in Alivara's hand. Then five demons appeared in front of her, each with a different sign and a different aura. They all went inside of Alivara's body. The purple-skinned woman stood there with a shocked and terrified expression on her face. Also shocked, Alivara turned to look at all the beasts as one of them pounced on her. Alivara's eyes turned to the same color as the beast, and they all turned to dust again. Then she spotted the purple-skinned woman who was hiding behind the giant boulder. What are you? She said to Alivara. If I knew that myself, I wouldn't be as shocked as you are right now, replied Alivara. If you give me that gem, 
in exchange for my help, the poopoo -poo woman said. Deal, Alvaro said quickly. I'm Alvaro. Dealine, Wood said as they shook hands. So, you need to do service? I mean, and to the magic, I guess? Dealine guessed. No, maybe, perhaps? Confessed Alvaro. Yeah, sure. Kid, so what do you want help with? Keyline asked. I think I'm not sure, but I think the royal family took my family. I need your help to get them back. Alvaro said. I'm done. As long as I get that gem. Since we're going to pay the royals a visit, we're going to need some royal support. Keyline said, smirking. To be continued. Yo, big up wow. Marilyn wow. in the chat. Mm -hmm. Just big her up in the chat. One time. Uh, it is not easy to write in novel format. I can tell you mm -hmm. that it is not easy to do it. I'm excited about this part of the show. Um, because we're not only transitioning from the literary genius of Marilyn, um, but we're also going to hear a few of the girls uh, come in and talk about their work life. And the first person to do that for us this evening is our next participant. Her name is Kyrie, and Kyrie's actually, well, I don't know if you all are familiar, but um, Kyrie is actually the indigenous name for Trinidad, right? And um, as the participant represented <laughs> in Gilbio, Trinidad and Tobago, for Trinidad and Tobago, um, born right here, native to the space, um, is Kairi. And Kairi is going to tell us about her artwork this evening. So put some love in a chat for Kairi. Um, I'll be reading a poem about my work called Kairi. It's called I Love Me. People are going to judge you no matter what you do or what you look like. So you might as well do whatever brings you joy and live your best life. I will love my body from top to bottom. You may not look like the models on magazine covers, but you're your own model. You may not fill the you may not fit the criteria of the beauty standards society has set, but it says perfect to me. Beauty is in the eyes of its beholder. Don't allow society society to say what you can or can't do what you can or can't wear. Go beyond all limits and accomplish your goals. Don't let others set your goals and succeed in what you want. Make everything that people tell you that are impossible, possible. Beautiful. I love the call to action in there. Go beyond your limits and go after your goals. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I love Thank you so me. much. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it before that um, these participants are discovering things about themselves that we didn't even discover at that age, you know? Exactly. I, I, can tell you from, I can tell you from experience, I did not learn to love myself until way later than, than 13, 14 years old. So, okay. so yeah, mm -hmm. the, maturity, yeah. the maturity that they have, and it shows in their work as well, you know what I mean? It really, really shows in their work, in their artwork. Yeah. So, so big up mm -hmm. to you for yeah. sharing this piece with us and continue to be the brilliant artist that you are. Mm -hmm. And continue to love yourself as you do. <laughs> and as, as you learn even more to do that every single day. Yeah, to be in the, inside of that practice. So thank you, Kairi. All right. We, we kind of we kind of wind and dumb, but we still have we still have some fire to go. Huh? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, yeah. in the ember section. So all they all they do do weigh in on us just yet, right? Throw some love inside of the chat. Let us know you're there. Let us know how you're feeling, how you're enjoying these pieces so far, right? We we still have a few more pieces to go. Uh, still more uh, a few more sparks, fire sparks to share with all of this evening. Right? Of course, of course.
And the last poem that I wrote was fun and inspiring, so I decided to do another one. So this is also a poem, and this time I named it The World We Live In. Why don't we all take a hard look at the world we live in? Why is it that we have all this hate, not love? Why is there always room for war, not peace? Why is it that no one ever thinks about the consequences of their actions? Is this what it has come to? Why don't we all take time to think about each other? We are surrounded by so much beauty, but no one takes the time to appreciate it. We are all busy with our lives, too busy to even notice as life passes by. Days become weeks, weeks become months, and months become years. Yet, there is no different in the world. Why is it our world is filled with corruption, destruction, poverty, and many other endless things? It makes me wonder, have we all given up? Haven't we learned a lesson yet? The world we live in, is it too late to change it? Or are we far gone? That change has just become my marriage. Let us all have some hope, faith, and pray for peace. And may God bless our soul, because the world we live in isn't going to last much longer. So open your eyes to change. Maybe we would refuse to let the hate and shameful ways remain the same. Hope you guys liked that poem and got inspired to make this world a way better place for everyone because everyone has a role in this life. Well, until next time, bye. So I drew this picture, uh, meaning how three different women and each one of them with different colored skin, different colored race, different colored everything. And they're still beautiful. And uh, which means that even though you're a different color of skin or you have a different race, you're still beautiful on the inside and outside. And nothing can change that. Because when you look in the mirror, you should see yourself. You should see your beauty, not what others see of you. You were born beautiful. Nothing can change that. The spotlight I drew shows how everyone is special no matter what they are. And no one, no, no, one, no matter what they say to you can change that. Thank you so much uh, for that, Angelina. I also believe that the spotlight represents how much light you bring into the world and um, how much, yeah, you exude that light as well. So thank you so much for sharing your talent with us, firstly in song and then in this beautiful drawing and then in the outside world in your mathematics competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, somebody else <laughs> would like to ask. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Thanks so much. Uh, what I mean, what I think she said, which is so beautiful. You you are born beautiful. I mm -hmm. mean, how these how these participants put these words together. Mine absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, something yeah. else too. I want to point out, and I am making a, a little demand here. You see this beautiful um long sleeve Gilby hood, um yeah. like pink jacket. I feel like we should yeah, have yeah. one of that. You know, it looks. Real nice. Yeah, <laughs> my own design. We have our our next participant. I'm really excited about this piece because this is an ensemble piece. We could call it that, right, Ariel? Yeah. It's an ensemble yeah, yeah, yeah. piece. Team effort. It's a team effort. That's correct. And mm -hmm. it was written by Valentina. It's a play. 
and we're going to listen to the radio play version of this this beautiful story that Valentina wrote and she starred mm -hmm. in it y'all mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> right and it was it was it's a collaboration of of the participants here at this in this cohort of girl be heard but not only that we had um Jamelia Bonten, she or she also played a role in this piece. And I want to just pick up all of the members of the Girl Be Heard. Oh, alumni. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Um, all of them um, from previous cohorts of Girl Be Heard. TT, I think I saw Jaden there, pick up yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Jamelia, pick up yourself, Mercedes. Uh, I think I saw oh. hope there. Y'all, and, and this is what we're all about. We're about um, being a community, being a girl with a community. So anybody else that I'm missing, just shout me out in the chat section. Thank you, thank you for, for you know, being here and continuing to be a part of the girl with community. So let us listen to this radio drama written by Valentina. Samantha Jan is an 18-year-old Indian girl whose parents wanted her to follow Hindu customs and get married. Instead, she decided to move to New York City to study and become a successful woman. She started to study and work very hard. She even got her own apartment, just about when the things started happening. Sam started to feel things like a pain in her head pains in her stomach and very sensitive hands. She decided to go to the hospital and they said it's something that has never been seen before and it was very strange when they did the body scans. She also had a best friend who started feeling a lot of the same things but had also started to see very vivid flashes of life from the past. The both of them went to see a woman who had a special gift to understand these kinds of things. They really didn't know what was going to happen. Sam and Emma were very nervous and scared. Sam and Emma, you have powers. Sam, you can travel in time. And Emma, you can see the past and teleport. What? This can be real. There's a group of guys around your age. Here's the number and the location. They have a man who's very special in these kinds of matters. And they have an academy called The Safe. So you can go anytime you want or call. Emma was very scared and surprised. And Sam was quite worried. It was still afternoon and the girls decided to go to the, the safe. The house that they saw was huge, like a mansion, and both girls strangely felt like they were at home. They knocked twice, and just when they were about to leave, a pretty, young, good-looking person opened the door. Hello, girls. Do you need any help? Hello, I'm Fan, and she is my, my friend Emma. We came for the save. Is it here? Come in, please. My name is Arthur, and who are you and what brings you here? Emma told them everything. Well, my kids have had power since they were born, and they are ready and prepared to save the world. Did you two want to stay here today and get more information about our academy? Sure. The next morning. Wake up, girls. It's your first training day here. Get ready. Emma and Sam get the uniforms on and get ready. And after, they went downstairs. Good morning, girls. You woke up early. Let's have some breakfast and start. This will be a long day. I read everything about you two, and let's just say, Sam, you are very, very brave. Right now, I feel like a father to you, and I feel very proud. 
Anyway, let's start. Sam and Emma went and trained a lot for the day. <laughs> While the other kids rested after a long, exhausting week of training. Whoa, I didn't know I could do that. You both did such a great job. Let's get something to eat. Let's have dinner together. Emma and Sam showered and returned downstairs to have dinner with their new family. It was as though Sam and Emma trained for an entire week, but it was only one day. They felt powerful and ready for their new life. While everyone is having dinner, they start to hear gunshots. Guys, in positions. Sam and Emma, try your best. Just try. Okay, I'll try my best. Let's go. Everybody from the dinner table starts to fight off the people who were attacking them. Actually, everyone was doing so well that they quickly got rid of the attackers. Amazing job, everyone. Wow, that was dangerous. We could have all died. Weeks later, Samantha saw a lot of girls suffering. And then she found out about a program called Girl Be Heard from a poster on the notice board at the same. She was so excited and started to work to help the program grow. Sam started saving women, girls, kids, and old people, not just women. Her siblings also helped a lot, and they changed everything to help her. In the end, she built a place to save people, a shelter for all those who needed help in her community. Of course, that brings us to the end of all the participants. Um, you know, art work tonight and bring everybody up in the chat. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work by all of these young people. I cannot wait to see what you all do next. What is the okay. follow up? Please be here, of course, at our next show, Sage and Revolution. We'll keep you all updated. Don't go as yet, of course, because you know what we like to do here at Girl Be Heard mm -hmm. on our shows. Mm -hmm. We like to do a community poem. I don't know what community poem is. So a community poem, right, as far as I understand it, right, is like everybody in this space who's in this Zoom conference right now, who's listening in on this webinar, who is in this room right now, they're going to put their most firesome, their most sparkly, the most like bomb line that they could think about in response to this prompt that we have up on the screen. So our prompt for today, um, in league with our theme, which is Radical Hope, we are asking you as our participants today, as our uh, audience and witnesses, um, what are you hopeful about, right? And we want you to put that into the chat section, but in the most creative way you can. And we just want one line, you know, how to, you know how to give us a holy pistol, right? We just need one line from you, your best line. What are you hopeful about? Now, we're going to give you two minutes to do this, right? And what we're going to do at the end of that two-minute period, we're going to probably have some music. So what we're going to do after that two-minute period is read all the lines all together as though they were one single poem, right? And you're going to see and hear how incredible that is going to be, right? So our community poem, you can start typing. Put it in the chat section. What are you hopeful about? Give us your best life. All right, man. <clears throat> Start three of them. Yeah. I'm hopeful about a better world where everyone is safe and comfortable. I am hopeful about the growth of GBHTT. I'm hopeful about coming out of this pandemic stronger and better. I am hopeful about these young women and that our world is in good hands. 
I'm hopeful for hot cocoa during this snowstorm in New York. Also, snowflake. <laughs> Love to see more girls find their voice. Hope that there is a tomorrow where each person remembers the aunt, remembers and acknowledge and only acknowledge for photos and and its beauty. But the sight of lighter hues of change to glow in days ahead. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, um, whew, where are we? To find uh, beauty. Okay, right, right, right. To find beauty wherever I go. And if there aren't there ain't no beauty, I'll make it beautiful. Pop, pop, pop. I love that. I love that. I'm hopeful about a better world where everyone is safe and comfortable. I am hopeful that after all that this will throw at us, we will come out victorious in Jesus Christ. I'm hopeful about building a more equitable future. The voices of these young folks are exactly what we need to uplift to do that together. I am hopeful that the... Oh, Mark. <laughs> burgeoning, 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 burgeoning beauty. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I am hopeful that the burgeoning beauty in, emerging from these young ladies, showing mm. that our will and future are in great hands, is highly contagious and spreads mm. like wildfire. I love that. Yes. For strong voices, for voices of strong women, determined to make our planet a better place. I am hopeful that amazing and dynamic things will keep happening because of God's amazing love. Mm -hmm. Hopeful to see a brighter future for all people around the world dealing with oppression or suffering. So many good people fighting to make things better for all. Hoping to see the world with zero discriminations and much, much more love and peace. Hopeful that this world will be filled with kind and happy all around from this moment. Yes. I am hopeful that the voice inside our heads speak positive truth always. I love that. Mm -hmm. Hope is the one thing that could help us get through the darkest of times. And of course, uh, our writer, in house writer Marilyn, closes us off for this evening. We are in such deep gratitude um, to everyone, to all of you who came on, but not only came on, but stayed on mm -hmm. and took in all of these presentations this evening and for spending your Friday evening with us. We know that we're not on a lockdown and you have so many other options. You could be spending right. your Friday evening, but you decided to do it here and we are incredibly grateful for that. So um, in addition to you, we'd also like to thank drum roll please <laughs> um so all of our incredible participants like obviously this show would not literally would not have existed without you so for all the weeks of work and us running you all down and begging for the work to get sent to us and for being your wonderful creative self we are grateful for you you. Right. We want to say thank you to Gilby Hood New York, of course, everyone here, everyone who was operating behind the scenes on the tech team, everyone who came out to support. We are really, really grateful to work with you all, for you all to, to be here and be part of this experience. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Gilby Hood team in New York. <laughs>